Hello friends and welcome to Figure Study, where we're looking at something, uh, I don't want to say weirder than we've looked at before, but it's definitely up there in terms of weirdness. This is the, and I'm going to try to pronounce it as best I can, but I'm probably going to get it wrong, so my apologies, Zhao Long Deep Sea Man Submersible which, as I understand it, uh, this is essentially a scale representation of a deep-sea sub used in China. I don't know anything about it, other than this is roughly what it looks like. And this thing, I, I absolutely adore this thing. <laughs> this is something that, it just kind of popped up out of nowhere, and I was like, yes. This is something that is just so weird and so random that as soon as I saw it pop up for pre-order on BBTS, I was just like, yes, that is not a bad price and that thing looks fantastically dumb. And yes, just yes. So yeah, it's a deep sea submersible and it looks the part. Um, I don't know if there are any inaccuracies aside from obviously a transformation. <laughs> Like, I don't know how accurate this is to the official thing, but it looks, definitely looks the part with these extremely small uh, three windows in the front there, little manipulator arms, the giant set of, uh, or giant rack of floodlights, tiny propellers in the cage there, more propellers up there, presumably for turning, and these are presumably for up and down, and then in the back, forward and backwards, lots of grippy bars and not roll bars, but like bars to pre presumably like guard things against like bumping into the floor and ocean floor and whatnot. Uh, there's the Chinese flag, some more stuff going on there. And yeah, it's, uh, I don't know, it just, it's cool. It, it looks like the kind of thing I would never go into even if my life depended on it. Because Rob does not do really tiny metal tubes in impossibly deep waters. This is never going to happen, but this absolutely looks the part. And he's so cute with his little manipulator arms that do move back and forth, up and down. So you can kind of pose the little arms, and that's just fun. And you can also pop open the hatch here. And on the inside, there's a little pilot that's basically just a... Uh, Oh, now it's in there too good to come out, okay. It's basically like a teeny tiny little diaclone type uh, type figure. And I very much appreciate how the figure just kind of sets in there and can, for the most part, stay in without any kind of trouble. I mean, there's not a whole lot going on internally. There's just a seat and like a control panel, but, or not even a control panel, it's just a window. <laughs> but still, I like that that's a feature. And, there's a little LED at the top, where if you push this little uh, antenna thing, it turns on the LED, and it's uh, not all that bright. Like, you can tell when it's on versus when it's off. Kind of. Like, right now it's on. There, you can kind of see. And then off. It would be nice if the LED was brighter, but at the same time, I'm not super broken up about it. I feel like... For what it is, it's fine, and when this thing is in darker lighting, it actually works really well, because, I mean, you know, this is a deep-sea submersible, so presumably it would be darker around... Actually, let me... Hang on a sec. Okay, so with the lights off, and clicking that on, there it's a bit more obvious that the lights are on. And I don't know, it works for, uh, you know, for what it is, for, like, a little added feature that's not super important. Not a uh, not a deal maker, not a deal breaker, but an appreciated feature nonetheless. And yeah, this thing's it's just cute. Uh, minimal. Well, I can't even say minimal paint apps. It's actually got a fair bit of paint, like the silver dotted throughout with like all the little details and like around the windows and stuff. A little platform here, the cages, the bars, the uh, orange bits. Some of it's plastic. Some of it's paint. Really, the only things that aren't picked out are, like, the panels and the rivets. And I'm okay with that. I may, may go in and panel line some of this later, just to kind of give it that, like, model look. But I don't know for sure if I'm going to do that. 
But yeah, this thing is <laughs> this thing is great. Just in, just its sub is very cute. Love those little arms. Anyway, here it is with a typical deluxe, and uh, you can see it's about deluxe-ish size. And here it is with the duct tank. All right, so normally this is where I would speed things up to get through the transformation, but there haven't really been that many videos on this guy, so I'm actually going to walk through it this time. Um, there is, as far as I know, as of right now, uh, as of this recording, one other video on this that is in English, and that's uh, TFR Wilderness, which you can check out his video up there. I can't say that his video inspired me to get this because I already had this thing pre-ordered from BBTS by the time his video went up, but it did inspire me to ship my pile of loot because I really wanted to get my hands on this. Anyway, to start off, we're just going to get the manipulator arms out of the way, and there are a couple of different places. Like, initially I was just kind of tucking them up there, but according to the box uh, art, you kind of swing it around so that it just kind of nestles up into this little corner up there, and that keeps it from flopping around. That keeps the manipulator arms out of the way. Next, I'm going to disconnect the tail here and just swing that up and out of the way. From here, there are essentially three chunks to this. There's the lower chunk along here that swings down, and then there are the chunks along the sides that kind of pull out and swing forward. So I'm going to try to see if I can... Uh, separate things out a little bit. Just kind of push these out a little bit so you can see how it separates down there because that will make swinging this down a little bit easier. And that's entirely because... Oh, and there we go. And that's because of uh, these pegs here and these little bits here. Just kind of have to work things around. It's it's fine. Like, it doesn't feel like it's going to break or anything like that. So with this swung down part way, we can pull these out and swing them back. Then swing this forward the rest of the way, and that's going to peg in right in there. Then we can kind of adjust a little bit more, then pull down what will be the feet and swing them around. And you can see that like the bar goes to the outside so pull it down and that is on a kind of uh it's like a, a swinging hinge and then a ball joint so that's that then you want to swing this back and then angle this forward and you can see the uh, armature there so you swing it back angle it forward and that gives you a little uh little mech chicken legs i love that okay now you want to pull this section up and that will disengage it and then you swing it forward and I love how they engineered this because there's this little you can see it in there this little panel there so as you swing it forward that shifts into place and covers up the gap that this was uh, that this section was filling in that's really simple but clever engineering so with that swung forward you pull this out and hinge that down and that is also on a double hinge kind of see there's the hinge and then the ball joint and it hinges up like that. So you want to hinge it down. This will pull back and disconnect and you see where it tabs in there. And that's on a double hinge as well. So you just want to hinge that up, hinge it down and then fold it down so that it just rests against the side there. At this point, you can swing this around and start pulling out the fingers like so. And lastly, this panel just folds up against the arm like that. And there is one arm. And lastly, this accordion's in, and this will just kind of sit right against the back there. So here we have this adorable, but also really freaking cool mech suit thing made out of a deep sea submersible. I love this. This is... This is some crazy design here. This is so much fun. And this is why when I saw this thing go up for pre-order, I immediately wanted it. Because this looks like that kind of thing that you see someone make a custom out of some kind of model kit and desperately wish you could buy it. But of course you can't because it's a one-of-a-kind custom that even if they did decide to sell it would probably go for hundreds if not thousands of dollars. Yet this is a toy you could just buy from BBTS or other 
places probably i mean i, I only say bbts because that's where i got this from but this is spectacular i love the simplicity of the design but the effectiveness of it as well i love the weird proportions how it's got the tiny chicken legs and then the extremely large arms with the giant three-fingered hands it's got kind of like a uh, almost like a gorilla-ish proportions going here with like the much longer arms and much shorter legs i love how the submarine uh, the submersible bits actually still kind of work so it's almost like the sub the uh, submersible just kind of squished in <laughs> so it's like a tinier version of the submersible just with arms and legs you can still if you want you can still pull out the manipulator arms and use those it's just fantastic i love this so much there's a lot more of this darker gray that's a, that shows up now in this mode as well, and I also like the little bits of uh, copper detailing on the biceps there. Just to kind of separate it out. Uh, the only thing mechanically that kind of worries me about this guy, not worries, but is a thing that I guess you want to look out for, is the bars on the thighs here. Because those are there, you can't really swivel the hips forward that much. Um, and I would worry that, uh, you know, if you're not careful, you could do some damage. It hasn't been an issue for me, but I've also been kind of keeping an eye out for it, so just a thing to be aware of. But oh my god, I love this thing so much. And the cockpit is still exactly where it was. The pilot is still in there. So now you can kind of imagine, like, you know, the piloting the big mech suit. <laughs> and the light is still as ineffective. There are so many great color choices here too. Like the lighter gray across the board is great, but then like having the darker gray in there when it's in mech mode, it makes it seem like the lighter gray is more like armor plating and the darker gray is like the actual inner workings and uh, I guess skeleton of the mech, which is really, really cool. I like how they brought some of this uh, reddish orange for the submersibles uh, stripes and fins and whatnot into the fingers to kind of tie it together. And because of the fact that all the propellers stay where they are, it seems like something that could still work in mech suit mode deep underwater. I feel like whoever designed this, it was uh, probably a labor of love, and that's great because uh, I love this, as I've said. <laughs> uh, I don't normally cover the posability of transforming toys, but the posability is actually pretty good too, with the ball-jointed shoulders that uh, can't go out super far, but you do get the full rotation and because of this transformation back here you get a little bit of a butterfly joint so you can kind of go out a bit which is cool the uh bicep or not bicep well yeah bicep you do get bicep swivel which is great you also get forearm swivel angle it so you can actually see you get forearm swivel right there which is also great and because of that hinge you can get a pretty decent elbow it's like a little bit past 90. I like the options that that affords you. Uh, as for the fingers, you can see they're all pretty simple. Just uh, two pins, and they curl around as you do. If we move the arms up out of the way here, and move the legs a little bit down, so that the uh, hips aren't quite in the way, you get a ratcheting waist swivel. Uh, ball joint in the hips, which is great but as i said there's a little bit of a hindrance based on the just structure and uh, geometry going on here you've got the single ratchet and the top joint there and then a friction joint for the lower one and then you've got the kind of hinge going in and out and then also a ball joint for the ankle so it's actually quite a bit poseable for what it is. I was not expecting this thing to be, you know, some kind of gymnast, and it's not, but it's still got a fair bit of posability to it, and it looks amazing. <laughs> it's so goofy and so great. I am just smitten with this thing. It's fantastic. I don't know. <laughs> and you can also kind of adjust the, uh, the height by messing with the leg joints a bit which also adjusts the proportions. So you've got options. You've got display options, you've got posability options. It's just, it's a very accommodating figure, I guess. Let's put it that way. Let's put this 
back here and move on to size comparisons. So this thing's not tall, definitely not tall, but it is stocky. I feel like as far as like density goes, this still kind of works as a deluxe, uh, deluxe size class. But again, like it doesn't have the height, but it does have the mass. And there it is with the duct tank. I just love this thing. I love the concept. I love the execution. I love the fact that it's actually pretty darn posable, considering it's supposed to be a mech suit. I feel like this is actually way more posable than it should be. But yes, you know, it's definitely restricted in some ways, but it, just considering the context, I think it works extremely well. I love the proportions on this thing. I love the detailing. I love the color separation. I love the quirkiness of just general concept, which is fantastic. I also love the fact that the center mass of the uh, submersible mode, which is where the pilot sits, remains completely untouched through the entire transformation. So the entire cockpit, the manipulator arms, all that stuff, nothing changes, which further lends itself to the idea of this being a mech suit. So, you know, you've got the vehicle mode that you're going through, and then when you get to wherever it is you need to use the mech suit, it just transforms around the pilot. And that kind of stuff always appeals to me. Really, the only issue that I have with this guy is uh, he does come with a weapon, which I'm not showing now because I typically don't do the accessories. And it's like a spear gun looking thing. And it's fine, and he holds it just fine. It doesn't peg into his hands, but his hands grip it really well. The issue that I have with it is there's no place for it to go in the vehicle mode. If there was a way for it to either store internally or on the outside, then I'd probably have it to show, but since it doesn't store, I just leave it in the box. There are a lot of little scenarios my mind's cooking up for this thing, and I feel like it does not need a giant spear gun to go with any of those. But yes, that is enough of my unfiltered gushing rambling, whatever you want to call it. That is going to do it for the Zhao Long Deep Sea Manned Submersible from Mechanic Toys. I forgot to mention that. Mechanic Toys, which uh, it says Mechanic Toys, but based on the plastic quality and consistency, the fact that it comes with a tiny little guy, and the fact that it also came with little postcards very similar to a couple of other figures that I've got in the past, I'm pretty sure this is actually Mech Fans Toys. For whatever reason, they're just going by Mechanic Toys for this. I don't really understand why. But regardless, that's going to do it. What do you all think of this thing? Is this the first that you're hearing of it? And if so, is this something that you want to track down or something that's just like, nah, I'm good? Because if you are interested in checking it out, there is going to be a link in the description to uh, order it off of BBTS. Again, it's not like a brand thing, it's just that's where I got it from. I'm also curious for anyone who's either familiar with this or familiar with this kind of stuff. Is there other, like, are there other figures like this that I should be made aware of? Because I love this concept and I love this execution, as I said. Whatever your thoughts, feel free to chime in down below. I always enjoy hearing from you all. And remember, art is more than meets the eye.